Hey yeah, welcome once again to Starlight's Art Studio. Unless you're new, then hiya, nice to virtually meet you. So it's definitely been a while since I've done a rare animals video, so I thought it would be a fun idea to do another one. With all the rare animal species that exist in the world, there are plenty that could inspire really fun character designs. So on my Instagram story, I asked you all which animals you might want to see turn into characters, and I saw these. And more. I took some notes to turn these into characters later. This video will have a group of small sea creatures. First up is the axolotl, aka the Mexican walking fish. So you've probably seen videos of people with these adorable amphibians as pets or as part of that one Minecraft update. <laughs> these little pink salamanders have become quite popular for their color, funny behaviors, and mouths that sometimes look like smiles. Despite their popularity, axolotls are quite rare, especially in the wild. Axolotls are rapidly declining in numbers and could eventually go extinct. Some likely causes being water pollution, overfishing, habitat loss, and invasive species, making them a critically endangered species. Other than the obvious, there are quite a few reasons this is concerning. Scientists in particular are concerned for the dwindling numbers as these salamanders are an important source of biological study. Axolotls can regrow limbs, and many scientists want to learn from their genetics to see how this ability could help humans against disease and injury. Which, it does sound pretty helpful. Some fun facts about axolotls include the fact that they look like they're babies for their entire lives. Neoteny refers to the characteristics of people or animals that cause them to look like their youthful counterparts. In people, this can include a larger forehead, big eyes, and a somewhat smaller nose and jaw, similar to a baby's face. In axolotls, they take it a whole another step further, and they can just stay young by not developing lungs like other amphibians. They keep their head gills. They can also just not develop teeth and just choose to suck in all their food. Axolotls are originally from Lake Xochimilco in southern Mexico City, and this is pretty much the only place they can be found in the wild. With such a limited habitat, it makes sense that they're particularly susceptible to being endangered. Another fun characteristic of axolotls is their wide range of colors. Look at them! The pink ones are the most popular variety, especially because the ones in captivity are more likely to be this color, as I'm sure you've seen in videos. In the wild, they may become a darker color to help with camouflage. Hmm. Like certain birds, axolotls do mating dances. When they're adults, they rub and do a little circle dance. <laughs> in the wild, the females lay about 100 to 300 eggs and mate once a year. Like sea turtles and other creatures, axolotls try to survive on their own after hatching. Although endangered, they do seem to be available to keep as pets. They're considered friendly and engaging and pretty easy to care for in the proper environment. They eat worms, tadpoles, insect larvae, crustaceans, and other sources of protein. They're nocturnals that stay away from the light, so a great friend for all you night owls out there. They also don't have the best eyesight and use their sense of smell to find food. Axolotls aren't known to be an animal that needs a companion or more than one in one environment and can harm each other, but it's possible to have two in the same tank. They should get along well as long as they're about the same size and are well fed. They might even sit at each other. <laughs> So for the drawing, I was really excited to work on her outfit. The pink axolotls that are kept as pets are the most known and popular, so I created her design around that variety. I knew I wanted to do something fun with her hair, so I sort of gave her a headband thing accessory to make it look similar to the gills that are on an axolotl's head. I know for the sea bunny slug girl, I kind of just gave her funny fuzzy ear things. I, they're just kind of there. <laughs> Okay, so for her design, I just remembered I actually went back on the headband thing, so instead of a headband, I just gave her really tiny little ponytails <laughs> around her head and made them look like a slightly different pink color than the rest of her hair, and that's meant to resemble the funny little gills they have on their heads. To resemble the long, slim body that an axolotl has, I give her a really long, curved ponytail with a curly tip to make it look like the tail. She has a monochromatic look, with all of her being pink with a pop of blue in her eyes. I think most pink axolotl eyes are actually yellow, but I think I somehow saw in one pic where it looked like an axolotl had blue eyes, and I kinda just ran with it. But pink and blue are also a nice color combo. In the reference images I had, many pink axolotls have little freckles, so I gave her freckles as well. Her outfit is partially inspired by kawaii fashion, with a lot of pink and some ruffles to resemble the gills. But I also want to include some sleek and streamlined sort of silhouettes to be like the axolotl. I gave her a slim fit shirt and suspender shorts with short arm warmers and tall socks. She also has a lace choker and a necklace with a tiny axolotl pendant on it. And some simple slip-on shoes. As a character, I imagine her as sort of an excitable introvert who doesn't mind being around others from time to time. A generally quiet girl, but is pretty playful when comfortable around her friends. Someone who enjoys rainy days and warm nights, but probably stays up too late to be healthy. She also probably needs glasses, but doesn't want to wear them. Definitely the type to enjoy being wrapped up in a blanket when it's cold. And here's the axolotl girl. Comment what you think her name should be, but I'm kind of leaning towards something like Alex. Let me know what you think. 
Next up is this funky little fella. It's a type of sea slug, specifically a donut nudibranch, given this name due to those circular little formations on its back. Nudibranchs are a family of squishy little mollusks that can be found in many places around the world. Many of them come in really neat colors and shapes. They have all kinds of wiggles and squiggles, antennae, tentacles, and little speckles on them. These are just a few of the 3,000 types recognized by researchers. Nudibranchs typically have a shell as babies, but lose it as they grow older. Instead of a shell, they'll gain something like toxins or other nasty flavors as a protection from predators. Many species will have two little antennae to smell things. They also move quite slowly, like snails and slugs on land. The donut nudibranch, or the donut slug, or its scientific name, Dodo Green Mary, <laughs> this word, it's a specific type of nudibranch. It's translucent, which means light can pass through its body somewhat well. It has a long, dark brown stripe down its back and several pair of donutty ring structures on it. The main colors are white, brown, orange, and black. These soft little slugs can be found around Indonesia and an island in Papua New Guinea. There isn't a whole lot of information about these animals, so I went for a design that leaned more towards the look and feel I got from the pictures of it. And speaking of the look, I chose to make this character a guy with a sort of baggy, sporty look based on the sea creature. The slug doesn't have any eyes, so I drew him with bangs and a bucket hat that hide his. The donut slug also has these funny circles all over it, and the silhouette of that made me think of something loose, like a jacket or sweatpants or joggers. And just as a prop, I gave him a donut, because why not? I wanted him to have a sort of laid-back look, probably like slow strolls and not being around too many other people for the most part. He likes sweets and can be found hanging around just enjoying his surroundings especially considering his very comfy walking shoes that help him go wherever he feels. I felt pretty inspired when drawing this character. There was something about all the circles and stripes on the slug that gave me quite a few ideas about the design for the outfit. I imagined he liked listening to stuff sometimes while on walk, so I also gave him some headphones. The speakers are patterned like the slug, and I added little antennae-like parts on the tops of them. His hat has stripes like the side of the slug, and I added those iconic circles to the sleeves of his jacket. Like the slug's back, there's a long black stripe going down the back of the jacket that ends with a strip of fabric to resemble the tail. I put long stripes down the joggers similar to the hat or the size of the slug's body. I also had fun with the shoes. I wanted them to look stylish and comfy with many bands, straps, and stripes around different parts of them. To add more stripe or band motifs, I gave him some rings, wristbands, or little chains. For the colors, I used the colors I mentioned before as the palette to work with. White, orange, brown, and black with most of the outfit being a white or creamish color with accents of brown, orange, yellow stripes. He has brown hair and gold accessories. The coloring process was pretty straightforward overall, but I wanted to keep an overall warm tone. By the time I got to the lighting, I wanted to play around with it a bit and have a light yellowish source from the left and a sort of blue atmospheric light or tone from the right. I think it added a neat feeling to the art. I think adding the stripes took the longest to do in the design. I couldn't really just like paint bucket them in, since I wanted them to follow the lines I drew like on the circles of the jacket and the long lines of the pants. I had to draw along them a bit slower than if I was just filling things in, but I think it turned out nice. It also adds a fun bit of detail. The fun part to me is filling in the details and making things look all shiny, like his hair. I added texture to the donut and little details like orange and yellow sprinkles to it that I think match the rest of it pretty well. Well, his design is pretty much done, just finishing up, like making the donut shiny. But yeah, have you ever heard of the sea slug? What do you think of the job I did turning it into a character? Would you change anything? Oh, oh yeah, and what about a name for him? I haven't had any ideas yet, so feel free to comment them, and I'll try to pick whichever one I like the most if I still can't think of one. The third rare animal for this group is a leaf sheep, also known as a leaf slug or salty ocean caterpillar. It's a type of sea slug, like the donut slug. The leaf sheep, scientifically known as the Costasciella kirishime, has a fun little fact behind its scientific name. The first part of it is the Latin part referring to the genus of sea slug it's from. Kirishime is because it was found to be native to the island of Kirishima among other places I'll list later. This adorable tiny sea slug can photosynthesize. Like plants, they can use sunlight and create energy using surrounding carbon dioxide and water because of all the algae they eat. Using the chloroplast from algae, they keep it and hold it for photosynthesis. Another sea slug that does this is the Elysia chlorotica, or the eastern emerald Elysia. It also looks like a leaf. And if you remember from biology, chloroplast is an organelle found in plant cells. It has chlorophyll. It's that stuff that gives plants their green color, which is why the leaf sheep are green. Chlorophyll just absorbs light to help with that photosynthesis process. Anyways, back to the sheep, or slug. <laughs> They're also bioluminescent, so they can glow in the dark. I was actually talking about this with a friend a while ago. They're such cool little creatures. They're also really tiny. They only grow to about a fourth of an inch, or around five millimeters to a centimeter long. 
They have two tiny dark eyes, little pink spots on their face that kind of look like it's blushing, and really long antennae that they use to smell food and find food. They have a whitish squishy body that is absolutely covered with long, almost quill-like or leaf-like structures, kind of like how snake plants and some other house plants have those really long leaves. They're super green with cute little pink spots at the very tips. Leaf sheep have been found around the reefs of Japan, the Philippines, Indonesia, Papua New Guinea, Northern Australia, and Singapore. They're still pretty new though, so there's not a whole lot of information about them. And some of that being how long they live. Apparently they've only been known about within the past 30 years, so there's still a lot of research to be done about them. Some say they probably live as long as other fellow similar sea slugs, which is about 2-3 to three years, but can't really say for sure. As adorable as they are, some don't really suggest trying to have one as a pet, considering what I just said about the whole not a lot known about them thing, especially since it could become hurt or eaten if they're in a tank with other sea creatures. But they are fun to draw and fun to watch videos of. Speaking of which, let's get back to the art. When creating a character design for this, I had a vague idea for her, but I think you can tell by the sketches I went a very different direction with her than what I was going to go with at first. I knew I wanted her to be very into plants, so I imagined her as a gardener or at least a plant mom who really likes being environmentally conscious. I initially just had her hair and face resemble the leaf sheep, with a plain dress, loafers, and small glasses to resemble the leaf sheep's eyes. I felt it was really static and plain though, both the pose and the outfit, so I reworked it a bit for a while, for quite a while, and eventually got the design you can see right here. Alrighty, so from top to bottom, she's got a headband, small round glasses, or more accurately, eyewear known as pasne, or those little armless glasses. She also has small pink earrings, leafy work gloves, and a dress with fun, tasselly, leafy parts that go around the shoulders and waist. Lastly, she has dark, leathery loafers and a rope belt. So, for her hair... Um, <laughs> okay, so I still wanted her hair to resemble the leaf sheep, but I made it longer and more flowy than in the initial sketch. I also don't know if it's even hair anymore, I just really wanted it to make it look like the funny... the funny nub things of, that the leaf sheep has, but yeah, so that's, that's what I came up with. I also gave her a lot more things to interact with. Since I saw her as an environmentally conscious person, she's watering her plants with a repurposed laundry detergent bottle turned into a watering can. The lid has holes punched in it with water spewing out as she holds another plant in her other hand. I wanted there to be a lot of movement in the art, so there's a lot of flowing things. I especially had fun drawing and coloring the water. For the colors, I used green, white, and pink, and a tiny bit of mauve. I put pink at the tips of all the green leafy bits, but I also included it in other places like her earrings, blush, and watering bottle. <laughs> oh, and also the plant pots, but that's sort of a mixture of the pink and the mauve. Out of all my food or rare animal characters, I think she has the most objects and props in her design. It's fun and gives them a lot more of a story. I'll probably do it more in the future. Oh, and I also had a lot of fun adding in the details for this, especially the texture of the leafy bits. <laughs> in a lot of pictures of the leaf sheep, the green parts look kind of spotty and speckled. I just assumed it was because they're so small, the little plant cell structures and the way they group together are at least partially visible, especially when you're zooming in so much. It may be also from the light passing through. Anyways, I wanted to include this sort of spotty look in the girl's hair and clothes, along with adding the details as if her hair, which maybe is hair, probably, but it's just got a whole lot of texture. <laughs> I think it added a cool glittery look to it. Other than that, I think I just shaded and added lighting to the rest as usual. But yeah, here's a leaf sheep girl. What do you think? What did you think of the process? Hopefully there was improvement from the initial design. Any name ideas for her? There's now two slug characters in search of names, so feel free to comment them. All right, great. Now all three together are Alexis the Axolotl, name pending, but I think I might go with that unless you have any other ideas. The donut slug guy and the leaf sheep girl. So what do you think? Have a favorite or anything you'd change or add to them? They're definitely going to be in the list of characters I want to animate, so that's going to be fun. Oh, and these are the characters from the last Rare Animals video. The Golden Pheasant Girl, the Purple Martin Girl, and the Dracula Parrot Guy. They were also very fun to design. Definitely comment any other animals you want me to do this with. I'm thinking about doing another group of birds. But yeah, that's about it for this video. A lot has happened since my last video, so be sure to follow me on my other social media. It's usually pretty easy to find me as Starless Art Studio on other platforms. You can stay updated on other art I make, since posting on there can be a little easier than making a full video. Also check out my Etsy. I've updated a whole lot since my last video, and there's a lot of new things that are selling fast. But yeah, thanks for watching this far, and I hope you have a stellar day. Bye!